man, why can't the Penguins play like this all the time? Really? That win was pretty flawless, pretty painless, I should say, as well. To start the Today Show, I'm going to get into just how well the Penguins played against the Predators. And the one main thing that really stood out to me about this one. It's something that they really haven't done well all year. It's coming up right after this drop. Your Locked On Penguins. Your daily podcast on the Pittsburgh Penguins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I'm your host, Hunter Hodes. Remember to follow me on Twitter at Hunter at MLSR Penguins. And of course, thank you all so much for making this your first listen today. We're free and available on all platforms. Penguins 2, Predators 0, or a goose egg, whatever you want to call it. And that was as painless and as flawless of a win. I basically said that in my intro. I'll say it again. Of a win at the, at, that you could have drawn up. Dominance at both ends of the rink. UC Soros did all he could to keep the Predators in this game. At the end, in the end, though, the Penguins were able to win this game and get their first shutout in Lord knows how long. I don't even have that off the top of my head. I'd have to actually go back on the schedule and look at it. Um, but it is very rare when they shut out teams this season. And the one big thing, they did a lot of things well in this game. The one big one, though, that really jumped out to me is the way they defended in that third period, and honestly throughout the game. Why haven't they defended like that this season? It took until game 75 to see it. And yeah, I know. Nashville is without Roman Yossi, Philip Forsberg, Matt Duchesne, Ryan Johansson. They traded Mikhail Granlin, Tanner Jim. And I understand that he's gone to. Yeah, they have a bunch of lineup who are literally just drone names on EA Sports NHL. Well, Tomasino's not bad, but Ryan McDonough's a household name. UC Soros is awesome. But for the most part, that team was, there's just not a lot of NHL caliber players on that team. But still, it took this long to see them defend that well, especially in the third period. They got only a one nothing lead. Outside of a couple odd man breaks, and most of them, I think both of them came in the third period, the Penguins really weren't tested defensively in this game. I thought the Predators made it very easy on them, but still, you're able to work out some of the kinks. You work on that part of your game, and it produced, I think, the best defensive third period that they played all year. The passing was very crisp from D to D. I also thought coming out of the defensive zone, the Penguins were very strong in that regard. And I thought their play in the neutral zone was also very strong. You know, the one break, one of the breakaways that they did, the Predators did have, I think Latang ran into his own guy, and then I think had Tomasino come in, Tristan Jarvis was able to make a big save with his left pad. You know, but other than other than that, there really again, there really weren't too many big rounds from that. But man, again, the way they defended, it was oh, we we've been I've been wondering all year, can they win this kind of game? End of the season, come playoff time, because you are going to have to win some of these type of games if you want to go far in the playoffs. If, of course, they do get in, it's far from a guarantee right now. Panthers won again tonight. They're still one point back in the Penguins. But, you know, when these games, when these, you know, when you get to this time of year, we're in the final day of March now, April starts on Saturday, April Fool's Day. All these type of games become more and more prevalent. You need to show that you can win them. And again, even though the Predators were without a lot of offensive players, a lot of their top offensive players tonight, I think it was a big step in the right direction for the Penguins. You know, third period game in general, the way that they give them much of anything. You know, you look at natural Star Trek, the Predators had five high danger chances at 5v5. Two of them came in the third period and both of them were on end rushes. The Predators had, you know, zero high danger chances in the second period. They had three in the third, but most of that was just three in the first, excuse me, but most of that was just special teams work. If you want to go to all situations, the Predators only had six high danger chances. Six. Penguins 
out I, at all situations the penguins had 24 high danger chances for six high danger chances against the expected goals for the penguins 79 percent for them at all situations 21 percent if you want to go to just five on five penguins expected goals 74 percent compared to 26 percent for the predators the predators only had one expected goal at five on five and it looked like that the penguins didn't give them anything Okay, again, the, I've said this for another time. The Predators really don't have anyone in the, in the name of good offensive players playing tonight. But the way the Penguins were able to defend in this game really stuck out to me. Even without all of those defensemen hurt, even with Mark Friedman getting a lot of minutes, even with Chad Ruedel, who struggled this season, getting a lot of minutes, even with P.O. Joseph, who I thought was a little bit of a mixed bag tonight, he got top four minutes. Brian Julin was put back with Chris Tang. I thought he actually had the best game, uh, one of his best games of the season. We're going to get to that in just a little bit. But you are going to need to win these kind of games if, if, if they make the playoffs, if you want to go on a Stanley Cup run. And for, for the last 70-plus games, we've been saying, yeah, they got to get better defending lead in the third period. they got to just get better at third periods in general. When are they ever going to clamp down and shut down an opponent? Well, you saw it tonight. And this is – it was a big step in the right direction for me. Obviously, a much bigger test comes – on Saturday, when the record-breaking Boston Bruins, who just clinched the President's Trophy, they basically have nothing to play for now, except pride, until the playoffs start. They come to town. That's going to be a massive game for the Penguins. I would assume Tristan Jari would start in that one. If you can get even a point out of that game, and you get if you can take three out of one, we'll get to what the best-case scenario is for this weekend. I'm sure you all can guess it. But that's obviously going to be a much bigger test, is what I'm trying to say. You have the high flying bees come to town. David Pasternak, Brad Marchand, Patrice Bergeron, Linus Allmar, Charlie McAvoy. The list goes on and on and on. Could be a playoff preview as well. That's where I'm going to really see did they take anything out of this game? Because they, you know, they defended really poorly against the Red Wings in the third period. Um, well, eh. I don't know if it's, I would say the third period. I would say Brian Russell really took that penalty. I'll take that back. I think they defended really poorly in the first period. Second period was a bit better. Third period, they defended a little bit better. They just didn't get the goaltending. But tonight, they did get the goaltending. They got that special teams play. They got two players to score that have scored all season for them. And they also defended um, and played some of the best defensive hockey that I have seen them play. All season long, again, all situations, only six high danger chances against five of them at even strength. You can, if you, if they can keep that up, find all these final seven games, play at that level defensively or close to it. Even if you play, you know, better teams like they are going to play coming up here on Saturday and Sunday. We will preview those matchups in the final segment of today's show. I think this team will be able to get in to the playoffs. But it was a big step in the right direction. Again, only one game. But I think that was the biggest thing that I really took out of this game was the Penguins' ability to defend, defend, and defend some more. They made it easy on their goaltender. He may have to make a couple of big saves, but everything else I think was pretty routine for him. I want to see more of that here in these final seven games and see if they can obviously get in the playoffs. But that does it for this segment. Coming up in the second segment, we're going to get into the goal scores from the Penguins tonight, why they're the usual customers, and how Tristan Jari really bounced back with his finest performance of the season, what I think led into that one. But before we get into that, we, we do have to touch on um, the official sports betting partner of Locked On, which is FanDuel. The Final Four is this weekend, and there's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. That's because right now, FanDuel is giving new customers a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet does not win. Just go to FanDuel.com slash Locked On and sign up today to claim your no-sweat first bet. Then you can wager on everything from the money line to point spreads to which team will we even be cutting down the net on Monday night. And it's on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. So don't miss your shot at the no sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash Locked On to sign up. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of Locked On. All right, I'm back in this episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes. Remember to follow me on Twitter at Hunter Hodes. Follow the show's Twitter at Elmer's for Penguins. And of course, thank you all so much for making this your first listen of the day. We're free and available on all platforms. 
rocking the Rush t-shirt tonight that I got at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I am a massive Rush fan, massive classic rock fan. Um, and you know, I think the Penguins were in the limelight tonight as, you know, limelight I think is one of their best songs um, in terms of for Rush. And Neil Peart is the second greatest drummer to ever live. Rest in peace to him. Anyways, that's my little tangent on Rush. Goal scorers tonight. We get things started with, of course, Jason Zucker, his 26th of the season. I will claim the W with this one. I said coming into the season again, I was not going to be denied. For those who remember, I said it. 25 to 30 goals. He's going to be fully healthy. I will take the win with that. It's very rare when I get wins, probably. I like to mess with myself about that. But I said 25 to 30. He's going to be one of their best players. I am glad to be right there. Um, also, what a move by Brian Dublin. He he almost screwed it up. <laughs> but did you all see that curl and drag that he put on that Predators uh, defenseman there? That was sexy. That's, that's what that was. It was really, really nice. He just knifed around him like it was nothing. Gets the puck over to Zucker. He has a wide open net. He's able to open the screen and make it one nothing. And, you know, again, where would this team be without Jason Zucker? And, and seriously, take a second, pause the video if you have to, or pa you know, pause the recording if you have to. Where would this team be without number 16 this season? Wouldn't be sniffing up. They wouldn't be in a playoff spot right now. I can say that. He has been dynamite for this team, and you saw it again tonight. I really hope he does hit the 30-goal mark. With each passing goal, I think it's going to get more and more hard, you know, more and more and tough to bring him back, but you know, I'm also still kind of on the fence about because I think whoever is going to sign into that next contract, if it's a big one, um, <clears throat> is probably going to regret it um, in a few years. But, you know, really, really nice goal there from Zarker. Great play from Dumlin. You know, speaking of Dumlin, I thought he played a very good game tonight. I really wasn't a fan of Mike Sullivan putting him back with Chris Letang, but I think it has more to do with POJ struggling a little bit up there. You know, they, they just haven't really been that good of a fit this season. The underlings are not good at all. Um, below, I think mean, they're below break even in shot attempts, scoring chances, and high danger chances. Um, even eye test wise, if you don't even look at the numbers, they just don't look like they're a natural fit for each other. The Penguins are really missing Marcus Patterson right now. I don't really think he's been on the ice too much. Um, I think he, well, I, I think so. I think he did say he was skating. I think some of the other injured guys. I think I think it's Pedersen, Kulikov, and I think Rude had been skating. It's been you know that really hasn't um, skated too much just yet due to his kidney. I'm not really sure. Ho hopefully he'll be able to play um, <clears throat> if this team gets in the playoffs. And, and, I, I, and you know I'm trying not get, to get off topic here. I feel so bad because he played in just a couple games. And if this team, God forbid, misses the playoffs. He'll have come back and played in like two games. <laughs> That's just brutal luck. Um, and yes, um, as my good friend Jen wanted me to say, Nick Benino does exist. He's just hopefully, you know, hopefully he's doing well coming back from that kidney injury. Um, <clears throat> but anyways, back to the original topic. Um, really nice job from Zucker. Great pass from Dumoulin. Thought he was seeing the ice well. Dumoulin, that is, at both ends of the rink. If he can keep that up and at least be average next to Chris Tang, maybe not even that. I think the team should be fine. And then the Penguins make it 2-0 on a power play goal in the third period. Thanks to Jake Gensel gets his 34th of the season. He's trying to get to, to 40 for another season. Vintage Penguin power play goal there. If you look and saw what the Penguins did, they set up a card Raquel in the Phil Kessel spot. That left, far wall, bumper, as I like to call it. Come, He comes up a little bit, fires a wrist shot. Jake deflects it in goal. We used to see that so many times in 2017 and 2018. <clears throat> Heck, even 2016 too. But especially, you know, whether it was Hornquist or Jake that was in front of the net or the side of the net. Kessel would fire the puck from there, deflection goal. You'd see it on a weekly basis. I, I like that they're kind of giving Raquel that Kessel role on the power play. I don't think, I don't think you know, the power play is going to run through Raquel as much as it did through Kessel, because I do think the power play, as much as people won't want to say it or believe it, I think the Penguin power play ran through Phil Kessel a lot more than people would want to realize. Latang runs it from the point, you know, he sets people up, but in terms of Phil from that left, from the left boards with how great of a shot he had and how great of a passer he was, you had to be on alert for that, for both of them. And that's why the Penguins power play was so good when he was here. Because sure, you had the top, 
you know, Hall of Fame talent. You have Chris Tang at the top of the point. You have Patrick Hornquist and Brother Net or Jake Gensel there, whatever. But teams, you know, they they knew Kessel was the X factor. And you know, you, you saw Raquel take a step a little bit in that direction tonight where he was a little bit of the X factor on the power play because he ripped it like just like Phil did and Gensel was there at the side of the net or slash the front of the net. UC Soros, no chance on that one, makes it 2 nothing. And honestly, the game was, you know, <clears throat> I know you're all thinking, oh, the game's not over, the Penguins have blown a lot of leads. In my head, I was thinking with how the Predators were playing um, offensively, I didn't think they had two goals left in them. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, the way With the way they were barely even gaining the offensive zone, they really only had a couple of decent shifts where they were um, gaining the zone at will on the Penguins. Um I thought the game was over at that point, but you know, some of the usual guns stepped up tonight and that was a really nice thing to see. And let's shout out the Penguins netminder here, Tristan Jari. <laughs> Round of applause for the number one goaltender. I tweeted today on my personal Twitter account. Again, if you don't follow it, it's at Hunter Hodes. And <clears throat> I even said, <clears throat> if I can get this here, you know, when they said they were going to start Tristan Jari tonight, they had no choice. You can't be flipping back and forth and back, just like a windshield wiper with one goalie or the other. If Tristan Jari is healthy, and he looked healthy at least tonight, <clears throat> excuse me, of course it comes up right towards the end of the show, you start him. Tristan, that is. No if, ands, or buts. You know, you, 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 you how do I want to say this? You live by him or do you die by him at this point? He's your number one guy. You're going to see what he's made of these final seven games. It's go time here. He plays like this. We'll get in just fine. But if he plays like the way he played after he came back, where he got he's busy, he was getting pulled left and right, they will not get in. They got a very stellar version of Tristan Jari tonight. That was, you know, last season's version of Tristan. And honestly, the first half of this season's version of Tristan. Seeing the puck well. He was aggressive. Two things right there. His movement. Look at how he moved. You know, he wasn't really, you know, flailing and flopping in the net like he had been in previous starts. He wasn't clutching for that back. He wasn't clutching for that groin. He didn't look wishy-washy in there. He looked like a confident goaltender who could make any save you wanted him to. And it sure looked like to me, because I've been told obviously the back injury, Obviously, probably looked like he probably had a pain shot in there during the game. I think he's probably going to have to deal with those for the rest of the season if they make the playoffs or whatever. You know, inject him for whatever he had if he did have a pain to, a pain shot because he played at a very high level in this game. He was a main reason why the Penguins were able to come out with the win. 28 saves, you know. You know, it's not they, the Penguins held the Predators to under 30 shots, but still 28 saves is 28 saves. That's pretty good. He, he did have to come up with a couple of big 10 bells, especially, you know, the one on the breakaway with Tomasino. Um, I believe there's another one where I think another Predators player deked around, I think, a couple of the Penguins players and got to the front of the net, but um, Jari was able to stonewall them there. You know, you need your number one goalie to make those kind of saves, and he did just that tonight. I would expect him to start on Saturday against the Bruins, and I would expect Casey to Smith to go on Sunday against the Flyers. And then we'll have to see. I think, honestly, the final five games, you're probably going to have to ride your number one guy. I don't think DeSmith is going to go in any of those games unless they have a playoff spot locked up. And honestly, at this rate, it's probably going to go down to game 82. That's just how it's going to be, people. So um, that wraps up. This second segment coming up to end the show, we're going to get into a little bit of a bigger breakdown of these two games this weekend and why they mean so, so much to the Penguins. That's all coming up right after this commercial break. I'm back in this episode of the Walking the Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes. Follow me on Twitter, Hunter Hodes. Follow this show's Twitter, Alan Show Penguins. And of course, thank you all so much for making this your first listen of the day. So this is going to be quite the scene at PPG Paints Arena this weekend. Bruins on Saturday, Flyers on Sunday. Oh, you know the Penguins are going to be up for both of those games. And I will say this. This is probably a playoff preview if they get in. They're three points back to the Islanders with the game in hand. Doesn't really mean anything. Even, if, even though the Islanders have a very tough tap back-to-back this weekend, they go to Tampa and they go to Carolina. Penguins, I will say this. 
if the Penguins are able to somehow sweep it back to back and the Islanders lose both games in regulation, Penguins are back in that first wild card spot. Now, is that likely? Probably not. Crazier things have happened, though. But, you know, it all starts this Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern, when the Penguins will play a matinee game against the Bruins, a team that the Penguins have played well against this season. I know you're probably thinking I'm weird for saying that, but they probably should have won both of those games, especially that first one. They had a three goal lead multiple times in that game. Going into the, uh, um, no, not going, it was yeah, second period, going into the second period, three goal lead, going into the third period, two goal lead, lost that game in overtime. I believe that was a 6 5 game. Winner Classic, they score first, Kasperi Kapanen. They take a 1 0 lead into the third period, and they're still pressing pretty hard there. But, you know, the Bruins tie it. They, they, and then they take the lead late in regulation, and the Penguins miss out on a buzzer beater by honestly half a second. It wasn't even a full second. It was half a second. They almost sent that game to overtime. They probably should have sent that game to overtime. They, they were the better team in that game. Linus Allmark was just very, very good. He's had one hell of a season for the Bruins. He's, I think he's probably the favorite for the Vesna, to be honest. But Penguins have played them better than most teams have. And I'm really curious to see how this third one goes. Now, Bruins, you, you all know it. They're the best team in hockey. They've been the best team in hockey all year. Brad Marchand, Patrice Bergeron, Dave, Jake DeBrusque on their top line. Pavel Zaka, David Krejci, David Pasternak. Pasternak is definitely a Hart Trophy finalist candidate. He's going to hit 100 points this season. He's well over 40 goals. He's going to hit 50. He is. He's really found another level for this team, especially after signing that contract. Patrice Bergeron, he's still kicking. Marchand is awesome. DeBrusque has had a good year. Krejci has been a godsend for them after coming back from the Czech Republic. They have Tyler Bertuzzi on their third line. Trent Frederick can do it all. Charlie Coyle's good depth. You know, Thomas Nosek going halfway from the Capitals. There is no weaknesses on that forward core on that forward lineup. There is nothing there. There's 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 no bad players on that on that forward group. It is, they are damn good. Defensively, Dimitri Orlov, Charlie McAvoy, Hampus Lindholm, Brandon Carlo, Connor Clifton with Jacob uh, Zaburl. Good luck. Def- Goaltending wise, you all know it. Linus Olmar, Jeremy Swayman, and oh yeah, this, this is still a ruined scene that's missing Nick Foligno and Taylor Hall. They don't even have those two guys playing right now. <laughs> this team is stupid good, people. They are good. You know, I, I think they're beatable come playoff time. I don't know if the Penguins can beat them. Probably not. But I think they are beatable from a, like in terms of a very good team in the Eastern Conference. If the Penguins win this game. You know, get the traffic in front of Allmark. Control the play like they have in the first two meetings, especially in that last meeting against the Bruins when they held them to no goals through the first 40 minutes. You know, clear them out of the net front. Limit their high danger chance against. I thought the Penguins did a great job of that. In the Winter Classic, they were doing a pretty good job of that in the third period of the first matchup. You know, I believe it was, you know, about eight to ten minutes in before the Bruins scored a goal. Then they scored the tying goal with less than a couple minutes left. That's when it really all went to crap there. But, you know, the Penguins, even though they don't probably don't match up that well against them, I still think they have played them a lot tougher than most teams have. Tristan Jari, he's going to have to have another stellar performance as well. If he can come anything close to the level that he showed against Nashville or even raise it a, a bar higher, I think the Penguins can definitely take this one. The Penguins' best players are also going to have to be their best players to win this one. Really curious about this one because, you know, again, this is a playoff preview if the Penguins get in. I think this is probably their most likely opponent unless something, you know, a little wild happens and the Penguins are able to catch the Islanders. But, you know, I'm going to be looking at some, I'm going to be, you know, writing some stuff down, looking up some matchups, see what Mike Sullivan is doing because he has last change against Jim Montgomery. You know, really excited to see this one. You know, it's going to be a raucous crowd. That's going to be a playoff like crowd at BBG on Saturday. Um, You know, the Penguins have done really well since the All-Star break at dominating teams at five on five. They've actually been the better team at five on five against the Bruins in both games. If that can continue and they're able to win the special teams battle, and the goaltending battle like they did tonight against Nashville. But if they're able to do that to an even better degree against the Bruins, then there's definitely a big reason. There's definitely a way that they can come out of that game victorious. Those are two massive points the Penguins have to take advantage because Panthers schedule, they play the Blue Jackets on Saturday. Their schedule gets a bit harder here down the stretch. They are going to have to play some really tough teams, but you know, right now they're a little, a little bit of the easy teams. They, they just beat they just beat Montreal a team. The Penguins somehow did not beat at all. 
on the season. They play the Blue, they play the Blue Jackets. They just won against the Panther, they just, the Panthers. They just won against the Leafs on on Wednesday. That one was a killer because the Leafs were up with um, less than a minute and a half left before the Panthers tied it. Um, if the Penguins were able to win that, they would have been three points up on the Panthers right now. Would have been a, even tougher for them. But you know, got to keep banking points. I don't care who you're playing against. The Bruins with the Presidents Trophy, they really don't have much to play for at this point. Penguins do. You're battling for your playoff lives. I want to see some intensity. I want to see that desperation from that team. I want you to show that you can beat those Bruins going into a series against them. Because, yeah, will they be the underdog? Under, underdog 100 million percent. They'll be the underdog against whoever the hell they play. But I want to see some fight from that team. I want to see if they can truly beat them and get two massive points. Sunday, Flyers come to town. I will say the Flyers are playing better hockey. They almost beat the Senators tonight. They came back from 4-1 down the third period to tie it. Lost in overtime thanks to Alex Dabrinkit. The Senators will not go away, by the way. They're five points out um, um, right now. But still, look, it's still right now looking like a three-team race for two spots. Um, the next closest team is the Senators. You know, they are five points out. Uh, the Capitals are basically cooked. They're seven points out, and they have six games left. Sabres have a couple games at hand on the Penguins, but it's it, their schedule is really hard down the stretch. And then the Red Wings, they're basically cooked at this point um, as well. So, you know, maybe in, in worst case, it's a four team race for two spots, but it's probably just a three team race, I think, at this point. But the Flyers, you know, the Penguins play the way they played against them in the first two meetings. Um, they will be just fine. But the Flyers, you know, they're, they've been playing some good teams tough lately. They've actually been winning a good chunk of games. You know, it's kind of hurting their draft lottery chances, to be honest, but I don't really think they care about that. They're not going to openly just tank games. But, you know, you know you're going to expect with Penguins Flyers, it's going to be a little bit chippy. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, just, I expect Casey to Smith to start in that one. But, you know, Flyers, you know, they don't really have, at least right now, that much offensive talent in their lineup. You know, it's kind of similar to the Predators, but I think the Flyers honestly have better offensive talent in their lineup right now than the Predators. But the Penguins are able to play the way they played against, you know, the Flyers in the last two matchups and, and against the Predators. I think they will be just fine. Again, winning the special teams battle, winning the goaltending battle. You know, they've been better at five on five. I have no issues with that. But, you know, that's really what I'm looking for against the Flyers. You're just beating the teams you're supposed to beat. You are supposed to beat a team like the Flyers. You are so, they're not good. They're one of the worst teams in hockey. Got to win those gimme games. And that one is at home as well. This is the last back-to-back of the season. This has the potential to be a huge weekend for this hockey team. Also, this potential to be a big back-breaking weekend for this hockey team. Got to bang points any way you can get them. If they can somehow, some way, get four out of four points here and the Panthers maybe drop that game to Montreal, they'll be cooking with some gas heading into the final couple of weeks of the season, heading into the final five games of the season, I should say. So... Again, I think that'll do it for this episode of the Lockdown Penguins podcast. This will be up bright and early for you all on Friday morning. I really appreciate it. This will end March, and the show was just unbelievable for the month of March. I have the numbers actually right here. Um, 25,000 downloads for the month, up 34% compared to February. You all rock. The YouTube channel grew at an exponential rate. You all are the absolute greatest, wherever you're watching or listening. So, Thank you so much for listening. I really, uh, slash watching, really appreciate it. We'll be back on Monday. Let's see if this team can have a huge weekend to really boost their chances of making the playoffs. I'll talk to you all then.